Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an undesic equation. Wait a minute, what is that? I'm talking about the 11th power. And I'll be presenting two methods even though one of the methods will be incomplete and you'll see why. And let's get started. We have a complex number z which is raised to the 11th power and then it becomes equal to its conjugate. How is that possible? Think about it for a minute and then we'll take a look. So for my first method, I'm going to do what I usually do most of the time when I get an equation like this. I'm going to replace z with something. What is the name of this channel? If you said a plus bi, you got it right. So z equals a plus bi. And then of course, if z is that, then z conjugate or z bar is just going to be a minus bi. So to find the conjugate of a complex number, I just negate the imaginary part. Real part stays the same. Make sense? And the conjugate is a special number because when you multiply z and z bar, you get a real number. If you add them, you get a real number. Okay? So that's unique. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. We're going to raise this guy to the 11th power and set it equal to its conjugate. When you look at an equation like this, let me tell you something. The power could be something like 2000, I don't know, 24, 25, something like that, right? And we would still use the same methods. Not the first one though, because the first one is going to give you an interesting equation. If you expand it, you're going to get something like that looks like this. a to the power 11 plus 11a to the power 10. And then let me tell you something. When you expand it using the binomial theorem, obviously you're going to get 12 terms on the left-hand side. And then by comparing the real parts and the imaginary parts, you're going to get two equations. That's going to be a system of equations. So let me go ahead and write down that system for you. That's going to be a to the power 11 minus 55 a to the 9b squared plus 330 a to the 7b to the fourth minus 462 a to the 5, b to the 6, and then plus 165, a to the 3rd, b to the 8, minus 11, a, b to the 10 equals 0. Notice that the powers are skipping because this is just the real part. And then, of course, there's a section, the imaginary part, which is uh, the terms that has i in them, right? And those are going to be like this, 11, a to the 10, b, minus 165, a to the 8th, b to the third plus 462 and notice the symmetry because it's Pascal's triangle, right? a to the fourth, b to the seventh plus 55a squared b to the ninth and then finally minus b to the eleventh and that's equal to negative b. And by the way, this the first one is not zero. I messed up. It's supposed to be a because this is equal to a minus b i. Get it? What did we get? Isn't that nice? We actually got an undesic system. <laughs> Good luck with solving that, right? Obviously, we're not going to solve it. I told you one of the methods will be incomplete, but you can kind of keep this as a souvenir. That's just a beautiful, nice system. Okay, let's see if computers can solve it. Right? Maybe Wolfram Alpha can give us some ideas. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're, we'll continue with the second method, which is going to be awesome. So let's rewrite the problem. We have z to the 11th equals z bar. So this is our equation, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by z. And you might be wondering what the motivation is. We have z bar. If you multiply z and z bar, remember we talked about it, you'll get a real number, but not any real number. You're going to get the absolute value squared. Now remember z and z bar when multiply is going to produce a squared plus b squared if z is a plus bi. And that is equal to absolute value of z squared. Awesome. Let's do it. z to the 11th times z is going to be z to the power 12 by using this. And that equals the absolute value of z squared. Awesome. We got a better equation even though it looks 12th power duodecic. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the absolute value on both sides. Because we want to compare the magnitudes, the moduli, right? And we can do that because we already have the absolute value on the right-hand side. It's just going to be 
the same, but on the left, we're going to get the absolute value of z to the 12, which can be written as obviously the absolute value of z to the 12th power, and that equals the absolute value of z to the second power. So what are we getting from here? We're actually getting something interesting because if you call this r, this is going to be r squared, at the same time r to the power 12. So r to the 12 equals r squared, and if you subtract r squared from both sides and set it equal to 0, and factor out r squared, you're going to get r to the 10th minus 1 equals 0. From here, we get three solutions. r equals 0, and by setting this equal to 0, there are two numbers whose 10th power equals 1. Those numbers are r equals 1 and r equals negative 1. Just remember, r is a real number, so we're not going with the complex rules, obviously, right? Now, r equals negative 1 makes no sense because r is the modulus. It's a non-negative real number. So this can't be the case. We have two cases. r is either 0 or r is 1. If r is 0, if the modulus of a complex number is 0, then that number must be 0 because there is no other number whose modulus equals 0. Make sense? Great. So we got one solution. z equals 0 works. Now here's the thing. What are we looking for? We're looking for complex solutions, but... Can z be real? Why not? Okay, let's go ahead and give it a try. If z is real, then the z bar is going to be the same as z. And then from here, we're going to get z to the 11th equals z bar, which is z. Forget about the z bar and just set z to the 11 equal to z. And then we can go ahead and put these on the same side, set it equal to 0, factor out as z and solve for this. z equals 0 comes up again. We already knew that, right? z equals 0 is a solution. What else? This can be 0. And obviously, remember, z was real. If z is real, we're looking at it, then z can be 1 or negative 1. So if z is real, there are three possible solutions, 0, 1, and negative 1. We said that r can't be negative 1, but we didn't say z can't be negative 1. z can be negative 1, but its absolute value or modulus will still be positive 1, right? Okay, cool. Now, what happens if z is not real? If z is not real. Notice that I'm not saying complex because real numbers are also complex. Sort of, right? Kind of. Well, exactly. Anyways, uh, we're going to let z equal to r e to the i theta. r is not 0. Theta is real so on and so forth. But wait a minute, didn't we just say that r is equal to 1 or 0? But we already talked about uh, r equals 0, so we're just going to, we know that in this case, r must be 1. We already talked about r equals 0, remember? So from here we get the following, e to the power i theta. We don't need r anymore. Great. This is really nice because now I can plug it into the original equation. A lot of times I think that was in the comment section, right? Somebody said, Pretty much, most of the time, we can just convert it to polar form, and that's going to solve most of the problems, if not all of them. So now we have z to the 11th equals z bar. We can easily find it if z is e to the i theta. z to the 11th power is by the mover, the mover, the mover. Okay, I can't say it. It's going to be i times 11 theta, and this is just going to be e to the power negative i theta. Remember, you just uh, find the conjugate by negating the imaginary part or just negating the theta because cosine is an even function. So cosine of negative theta is going to be positive cosine theta, but the sine of negative theta is going to be negative sine of theta. And multiply by i, put these together, and you'll get the idea. Make sense? Cool. Now, here's what we have. The bases are the same. So in other words, we can say that 11 theta is the same as negative theta. Well, wait a minute. We kind of need to add our period, and that's just going to be 2 pi n i. That's going to be our period for the modulus. Therefore, we not for the modulus, I'm sorry, for the exponential. So what we're going to do is we're going to set 11 theta i to negative i theta plus 2 pi n i. Dividing both sides by i is not going to hurt anything. 11 theta equals negative theta plus 2 pi n. Adding theta to both sides, 12 theta is 2 pi n. 
divide both sides by 12 and simplify, you're going to get theta equals pi n over 6. Or did I say n is an integer? And actually you can use n equals 1 through 12 or 0 through 11, doesn't matter. I'm going to use 1 through 12. So take a look. If n is equal to 1, then theta is just going to be pi over 6. And since r is 1, from here we can write our complex number z as e to the power i times pi over 6. And this is actually going to be z equals root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i in standard form. If you want to write it, you can leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. n equals 2, n equals 3 is going to produce more and more solutions. But one of the things that I wanted to get your attention on uh, was if n is equal to 3, z is just going to be e to the power i pi over 2, and that's actually i, so that's going to be one of the solutions. Another one, of course, we have n equals 2 in the middle, and then if n is equal to 6, z is going to be e to the power i pi, which is negative 1, which is a real number, by the way. We already know that negative 1 is a solution, but we just found it one more time. And finally, if n is equal to 12, of course, there are other values. Z is just going to be 1, and again, that's a real number. But let's go ahead and take a look at the values that are listed, hopefully. But before that, we're going to look at the graph of z to the 11 and z bar, right? Kind of a plot. Anyways, real solutions, we already talked about it. And then the complex solutions, but wait a minute, is that the whole thing? No, because notice what it says here, more roots. If you click on that, hopefully you'll get more solutions. And finally, roots in the complex plane, yay. These are all the 12 roots of 1 plus the 0 in the very middle. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.